Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, it's great that there's so many people, <laughs> much more timely than I am, that have already decided to join me. I hope that today um, the, the camera is a little bit better. I've changed webcam. <laughs> I don't know if you can tell. I progressively get bigger as these as these streams go on. This is a very high resolution webcam, which I think is fighting a little bit with the fact that half of the universe is on the internet at the moment. So I'm streaming at a slightly slower rate to avoid some some interaction. Um, sorry, some some pro interference was the word I was looking for. I was saying to someone, I've been quarantined for so long, I've forgotten how to speak. Um, but yes, yeah, so hopefully this is an improvement over yesterday and the day before. We're progressively getting better. Let me know how, how it looks and sounds to you. Um, hello to everybody who has joined me. Tadius from Montreal. Um, yes, it is brisk even over here today. And Brian and John and Robert and David and Terry and Drazen and Brian again. <laughs> Um, so it's lovely to have you all here and thank you for, for joining. If you want to at any point throughout the stream post any comments uh, or ask any questions, please feel free to do that and I will answer them as I go along. I do try and keep an eye on the comments while I'm streaming. Uh, so I'm glad that everyone can see me so far. That's fantastic. Um, all right, so I wanted to talk a little bit about bracketing because somebody asked me the other day, actually posted... Uh, on a stream after the fact, um, if I could explain what bracketing is. A lot of you may know it, may use it, um, or may have inadvertently set it on your camera and are now wondering how to turn it off. It does happen. So bracketing is essentially where you take a sequence of shots, whether it be th usually in increments of um, a, a correctly exposed shot, and then one underexposed shot and one overexposed shot. And depending on how you set up your camera, you can do under, correct, and over in that sequence, or you can go under, over, correct, or however you want it. There's actually a setting for that. Once you've got your three, you can also do five, so two progressively underexposed shots are correct, and then two overexposed shots in thirds of a stop or half, halves of a stop, depending on how you, how you do that. And then you can do seven, so then you'd have three good, uh, sorry, one correct, three over and three underexposed and so on. So it goes like that. You always add an extra under or overexposed um, shot on either side of the correctly exposed shot. Now, why? Why do you want to do this? Well, there's a number of reasons. Um, back in the, uh, the day, <laughs> film canisters actually had in their instructions, uh, if you bought film which had an instruction in it, the recommendation to purposefully bracket, so to purposefully take a shot slightly below the recommended exposure by the camera meter, one per the camera meter and one slightly overexposed, so that if you were shooting professionally, you would have um, absolutely no doubt that one of those three shots would be correctly exposed. Um, I'm sorry, and I'm not sure why you've only got sound on the left channel. The mic I haven't changed. That one I have not touched because I've got a very good microphone. <laughs> but, but the camera I have changed, so I'm not sure what's going on there. Um, but I'm glad that everyone is, is seeing the slight improvement to the, uh, to the camera. This is actually a very, very snazzy webcam, um, courtesy of my husband, who, who does streaming himself for some completely different purpose. But anyway, uh, so... So with bracketing, you can do it on pretty much any camera. Uh, essentially, it's not much different to manually changing your exposure compensation. The only difference is that the camera does it for you by default. And so sometimes we do get people who will have accidentally set it on their DSLR and then they call up in a panic and they say, for some reason, my shutter speeds have gone completely crazy and I don't know why. And it's usually because they set bracketing. So first of all, I'm going to show you on a DSLR how, um, how you set it and so how you then unset it. I think, in fact, I hope that on my D850, I haven't, I haven't uh, set up the bracketing button to do something else. No, I haven't because you can customize these things. Uh, so the bracketing button, I just have to switch my screen here so that I can see what I'm doing. On the side of the camera, you have this little button here called BKT. Uh, on other cameras, it's on the top. 
Uh, some cameras it's a bit further down and on cameras that don't have a bracketing button it's the function one button on the on your ring finger there. Quite often if you push the function one button, not with the bodies that have the button but, but with bodies that don't, by default straight out of the box it's down here. Now when you set that, I'm going to show you what your top screen looks like. It may The green screen may interfere with this a bit, so I have to tilt it. So you see there it says zero frames and one stop. So zero frames means that I don't have bracketing on right now. Um, I have to say that that's very confusing. It's not just a simple on or off option. It's quite literally zero frames or, as I'll show you when I do this, so we've got, uh, let's do it, tilt it. <laughs> Good old green screen reflection there. So zero frames and then if I move my wheel I've got three frames and then if I move my wheel again I've got five frames and then if I move it again I've got seven and then I've got nine. So that's that's those are my options. So if I've got three frames and the one over here is one full stop so that means that it's going to give me a correctly exposed picture it's going to give me a picture that is one stop underexposed and it's going to give me a picture that's one stop overexposed. Uh, my camera is set so that it does under, correct and over. But you can set it however you want in the custom settings menu. So that's how you turn it on. Now when you look at your display at the top there, if you've any doubt, there's this little, the line which normally shows your meter, it'll have a little zero and then it'll have two little dashes if you've got your bracketing set on. If I put the bracketing on to five frames, there we go, and you see now that the, the line over here has got a lot more dashes on it, uh, so it's five frames, and it will do the same for seven and for nine. Um, so then every picture that I take, and it doesn't matter whether you're in continuous low speed actuation, so that's just single shots, that's three single shots that I've just taken there and every single shot is a slightly different exposure um, or if I if I put the camera into continuous, continuous low speed here it will go, it will take the three shots that I've set um, and it won't take any more because those three are the bracketed shots so here's a um, delightful picture of my blind that you can't see because it's grey <laughs> so of course it's completely interrupted by the uh, by the, by the green screen effect that I've got here. Um, so just to show you, if I put that onto five frames and I've got it on continuous, it's going to take the five shots and then it won't take any more because it's only going to take the shots for the bracket that I've chosen. So now I've got five shots and each one is at one stop different to the other. Let's say you don't want one stop of difference. Let's say you want to bracket only by thirds of a stop or two thirds of a stop. Well, then again, you've got your bracket button here, and let's twiddle this round. So, oop, there we go, bracket button, and then rather than moving the back wheel to change my number of frames, I'm going to move the front wheel, and you can see it goes thirds of a stop, two thirds of a stop, a stop, and then two stops, and then three stops. Uh, that's as far as it does. So you can bracket up to three stops um, on either end of your correct exposure. Um, a lot of people use bracketing for HDR, high dynamic range photography. The reason being that in one single correctly exposed shot, you can't have the level of detail that you need in all the highlights and all the shadows, as many, many people will already know. So HDR photography, although it can sometimes look a bit extreme, and it can sometimes look a little bit... Um, I want to say surreal, <laughs> it depends on how you do it, um, but if you are going to do HDR you can be as subtle or as unsubtle as you like um, and the unsubtle uh, pictures are those very very highly saturated skies and the clouds that have all this definition in them and all these different tonal differences because essentially what they've done is they've taken these bracketed images and then they put them into a high dynamic range and HDR software. Yes, Malcolm, bracketing will work with the Z7 in the same way. And I'm going to show you how to bracket on the Z6 in just a minute. I thought I'd show the DSLR first um, because it's a very obvious button. And back when I had, I'm trying to think now, I think it was a D700. It didn't have its own bracketing button or 
for some reason I had the function button set as my bracketing button. Um, and so many people had the same problem because by default that was the bracketing button and they would then accidentally turn it on. Their camera in continuous would never take more than three frames and their exposures were all over the place and they didn't know why. So hence I'm showing you the DSLR first. Um, so I don't know why anyone would want five shots at three stops of bracketing, to be honest, uh, Paul. It's a bit of an extreme example. I would imagine that if you are going to do an HDR um, stack, even then three stops is just like, it's just so extreme. But essentially those different exposures all stacked on top of each other will give you with special software because you have to have special software that will overlay the images onto each other so that you retain this information. You can do it, I believe, in Photoshop. Um, it does have an HDR mode. Um, I use one called Aurora HDR, Aurora HDR, uh, which is one of the recommended ones, although to be honest, I do very, very little HDR photography, but it has um, a few other gizmos in there, which are sometimes quite useful. Um, there are some other ones that I've completely forgotten the name of now, but there are quite a few HDR um, software company providers out there. If you want any more information on HDR software, you can just drop me a comment. I'll try and remember to, to upload some links, um, but I'm sure that a lot of you who've joined us this afternoon probably have some experience with this too and you can also post your recommendations always welcome to have your recommendations i used aurora hdr because it's quite easy to use um, and you literally just upload your three or five images and it squishes them all together in a very nice way you can then tweak um, different parts of the frame you can adjust how much um, you use in terms of the darker shots and the lighter shots to get um, a picture that you're you're happy with. So that's um, why you would use bracketing in that sense. As I say, with old film uh, canisters that used to have a little slip uh, of instructions in them, they would recommend using bracketing just because if you're shooting film, obviously you can't see what the picture's going to look like then and there. You have to send your film off and wait sometimes weeks sometimes less sometimes an hour if you go to you know over the counter places um the place that i use takes about two days because i have to send it off it's a company called robbie's photographic and they do all of my film developing for me um and they take a couple of days to to do it they scan it for me as well but it's still too much of a wait that if i was doing a project where perhaps i didn't think i'd be able to go back um then I wouldn't want to run the risk of not having gotten the shot so quite often I will sort of if I'm using a film camera then I will just bracket myself anyway the FM3A which is my film camera as I talked about the other day this this one here actually I talked about it yesterday uh, doesn't uh, doesn't have a bracketing button obviously because it's a mechanical film camera what it does have actually is a flash compensation button which I think is quite fascinating it's right where the bracketing button should be but what I do with this is I just set it manual and then I use the exposure compensation dial which is there uh, there sorry uh, and I just under over expose a little bit if I just want to be sure if the lighting is particularly harsh it's worth just doing one over and one under to make sure that you get one of the shots um, perfect. So that's with a mechanical film camera. Same would be for an FM or one of those cameras. Any camera that doesn't have this exposure compensation wheel or in fact any digital camera that you cannot find the bracketing on, it does exist in every digital camera, but if you couldn't find it, for example, and you didn't um, have the exposure compensation wheel, you could cheat with a film camera by telling it that it that the film is a slightly different ISO to what it is. So if you say that the film is slightly faster or slower than what the film actually is, then you can cheat the camera into thinking that you have that you have a different exposure. So then it will it will meter correctly for you. That's just I mean that's also you can push and pull film that way and stuff, but that's an entirely different uh, stream topic, so I won't get into that too much. On the F6, which I have somewhere in one of my bags, here we go. On the F6, uh, it actually has a bracketing button over there, over, sorry, it's a mirrored image, it's a bit confusing, uh, over here. So with um, the F6, possibly the F5 as well, 
and I believe the F100, you've actually got a bracketing button in your film camera, which is uh, is nice of Nikon to have thought of that, because it is useful to bracket and film just to be on the safe side. As I say, these uh, when you're using it with film, these cameras are very, very intelligent, and they will try and meter as accurately as possible. But if you're not sure that the exposure is going to be correct or not, or it's you know it's very harsh contrasty lighting. It's worth just underexposing for one shot, overexposing for another shot, and then sticking with what the meter says for another shot, so that you've got a few options. Um, just to uh, bounce back to the comments here, so Paul was mentioning yes, you can now uh, combine HDR images in Lightroom. I I have a slightly older version of Lightroom on one computer, and then I have Creative Cloud at work, um, and I haven't used it, but I think that it's it's good enough for most people of course if you want a genuine if you just want to have a play around with it then just use the the hdr function in whatever software you have um it's quite interesting to do bracketing when you're doing things like product photography particularly if you've got something with lots of bright colors um and what tends to happen is that the color information and the lighting information uh, slightly overloads the camera sensor, which is why if you have a slightly under and a slightly overexposed shot, you've actually got more information uh, in those three different shots, obviously, than you have in a single correctly exposed shot. So that's why when you slap it all together in Lightroom, Photoshop, uh, Aurora, any of those, um, then then you get more information, you get a brighter, more vivid picture generally, and you will retain more information in the shadows. Um, just to uh, sort of slightly deviate from that, with modern sensors, sometimes it's quite recommended that you also manually uh, underexpose so that you can pull up more information in post-processing. Uh, why is that? That's because modern sensors quite often retain more information in underexposed areas of the frame than they do in the highlights. So if you've got a scene and you need to use a particularly high ISO, like let's say for example on my D850, I needed to shoot at 10,000 ISO in order to see all the detail in a shot. If I decided maybe to bring it back a bit and shoot at 8,000 ISO or less, I never shoot that high anyway, but if I did, and then just pull the details up in post-processing to get those, to get that information out of the shadows, the D850 could easily handle that. Um, full frame cameras generally can. So when people say, why DX, why full frame? Full frame cameras tend to retain more information. They have greater dynamic range. They have more information in the shadow areas. So you can pull up that detail in post-processing, um, which is very handy. Similar to why you'd want to bracket if you're not doing HDR specifically, um, just getting a picture that is perfect in camera rather than doing it afterwards in post-processing. If you bracket, you've got the choice of three three pictures as well and three different exposures. Uh, before I carry on talking about bracketing, I must mention, if you would like to donate to the coffee fund, my, um, my coffee cup is pitifully empty. It's also turning into the shop because it's got a little hedgehog on it. Um, it's very empty. It's very sad. So if you'd like to donate to the coffee and hot cross bun fund, <laughs> you can do so using Super Chats. Thank you very much to Fatini for um, joining in and uh, social distancing fist bump to you. So um, if you want to do that, you can using the little um, panel on the side. It's this side, get confused because you're looking this way. Um, then you can do that and it's, it's all very much appreciated. Right, so that's one use of bracketing um, on a DSLR. Now, I'm just going to show you on the Z cameras. At the moment, I've got a bit of a funky. I've got the 60mm macro on my Z6 at the moment. But let me just make sure that I've got it set up the way I want it here. So, do, do, do. So, I did not think to put it in the I menu, but I should have done because that would have made a lot of sense. So I'm going to do that now. Um, there's a couple of ways that you can access bracketing on all Nikon cameras. In the custom setting menu, let's see if it focuses, it's going to disappear. This little option, which is getting very smushed by the green screen effect, not that one, I'm on the wrong side, there we go. E is bracketing slash flash. So in your bracketing slash flash menu function, you have the options once we get past all the flash options, 
you've got the option to um, choose your order of bracketing, as I mentioned before. Bracketing order. You can't see it because when it highlights it in yellow, it does get very confused. But essentially, the one that this is showing is correctly metered. So meter, then under and over, and then the one underneath, so you can see it now. The top one is meter, under, over, and the bottom one is under, meter, over which is just what I said. So one underexposed, one correctly metered, one over, or correctly metered, then under, then over. So that's where you would control those functions. I am just going to put bracketing into my I menu quickly um, because for some reason I didn't think to do that before I started this, uh, which would have been an excellent idea. So let's just do that. Do, do, do. If you don't know how to um, access your I menu, on your Z camera. You probably do if you've had it for more than five minutes. Uh, so what you wanna do is go to the custom settings menu. Custom settings menu is fantastic. Everything you could possibly need is in the custom settings menu. Uh, so you've got F controls and then this one down here that you can't read is customize I menu. So that's the one that you wanna go into and then you can pick and choose what you wanna assign to any of these buttons so that then when I am over here in my normal screen display, if I press this button, I, then I get all those options. Obviously, green screen is being shown on the back screen, so it looks like looks like I'm invisible. Um, so I am going to, from there, pick my auto bracket on or off, and then it gives me the option say exactly the same as it does on the DSLRs, number of shots, which you can then choose. So let's go number of shots and then you use your arrows up and down, left and right. Let's say three frames and then your increments, you can again do thirds of a stop or you can do full stops. So I'm gonna choose full stops for now. I'm not gonna take a picture of the green screen because that will annoy everybody. Let's take a picture of something that isn't green and hopefully you'll be able to see this. It did all three shots just like that. Miraculous. I think that's maybe because I've got it set on. So let's see if it will show you now. I, I'm the only reason that I'm hesitant is because I don't know how the background's going to affect the image. But let's see. Can you see that kind of? You can kind of see that, can't you? So there's my underexposed. There's my over. Uh, that's not my overexposed. Oh, wrong way. Correct under no that i beg your pardon that's correct that is under that is definitely over so that's the sequence that i chose in same thing exactly the same thing as your dslr just much harder to set it by accident <laughs> so, so i've discovered much easier to set it by accident on your uh, dslr than it is on here so it's obviously not going to affect it if um let's just turn it off quickly so then you just have to change the number of frames to zero frames. Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, let me know if that is of use to you and if you'd like any more tips about um, bracketing or HDR or anything like that. I thought that that was fairly useful because of the number of people who've accidentally set their bracketing on and then their shutter speeds have all gone completely crazy. So if your shutter speeds are going crazy from one shot to another, that is the first thing I would check. Um, I noticed that uh, Drazen said that he thinks the F801 has bracketing too. I think that essentially any Nikon film camera that had autofocus actually may have had bracketing because it kind of makes sense. Um, and Nick says that he always meters manually and always manually brackets. Yes, I'm a bit old school like that too. I frequently do that, which is why my eye menu did not have bracketing as a shortcut because I just do it without thinking about it. Um, one tip, if you are going to do HDR, is to use a tripod. Some of these cameras, and in fact, the D850 does have an HDR mode, and I will show you that quickly because we're on the subject of bracketing. I'll try and cover the other topics today, the, way, the rate that I'm going. <laughs> I'll just talk about bracketing all day. Um, so down, way down in the, doo -doo 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 -doo, in the photo shooting menu. Why is it set to off? Because I'm in continuous. Let's turn that off. Let's try that again. Oh, am I also in raw? It won't work sometimes. For some reason, it's not letting me do it. I must have got something set. It's because I got bracketing on. It won't let me do it if I got bracketing on. There we go. If you got bracketing on, this mode won't work. Discovery of the day. So 
the top option there, I'll try and get the camera to refocus, that's pretty good. HDR, high dynamic range. If you turn that on, it will give you a few options. So HDR mode is off at the moment, and then you've got the automatic exposure, exposure differential. I'm just gonna show you, you've got the choice of automatic at the top, one, two, and three stops there. So you do, you can actually do HDR with three stops. There you go, that answers that earlier one. And then you've got exposure smoothing, which is quite useful because it can look quite harsh and you've got high, normal, and low. Um, so if I turn that HDR option on, it gives me the option of on for a series of photos or on for a single photo. So let's say I didn't want to do more than one HDR shot, then I would just turn it on for one. And if I wanted to do a whole load of HDR shots, which you probably would, um, then you put it on for a series. And what it essentially does, if you set it up on a tripod, let me put it on quickly, I will take a very unexciting picture of my water bottle. Let me put it on for just a single photo um, and try and focus on something. There we go. Okay, I've got silent shutter on. So it's not, it's not super exciting, but, uh, ah, see, this is why I use a tripod for this. Can you see that? That is actually ever so slightly blurry. Um, the reason being that I wasn't holding the camera steady. So whether, whether you're using the HDR mode in the camera or you're doing bracketing so that you can then do HDR afterwards, um, I would recommend using a tripod or putting it somewhere, putting the camera somewhere stable. Um, because obviously, although you can sometimes fix the discrepancies, if you're doing bracketing and then bringing it into software after, you can fix, fix the sort of slight misalignment of images ever so slightly. When it comes to the in-camera HDR, it's not very forgiving. So, um, for example, I barely moved and yet that outline of my water bottle there was slightly blurry. You could see the two images hadn't quite lined up. So that's, that was my tip. Um, so Brian wants to know, uh, hello Richard from West Sussex. <laughs> hello from me, also in West Sussex. <laughs> um, so how about the other ways in which they will bracket? Flash only, white balance, um, active delighting. Okay, so there are a few, um, wait, you can, uh, bracket in those modes if you've got for example a flash attached then you can bracket using flash which can be useful um, active delighting is an odd one some people recommend to turn it off other people recommend to turn it on um, it is essentially just a, a Nikon's way of using software or applying software to your photo to brighten up um, the shadows and it's gotten better in recent years so more and more people are using it I may need to do a different stream on that, otherwise I will never <laughs> move on to the next topic, which is what I wanted to talk about. So hopefully um, that answers the, the main questions on bracketing. But if you want me to go more in depth, um, maybe I can set up something to show you how to do it on screen. The next topic that I wanted to talk about was, I told you yesterday I have one of the Holy Grail, uh, <laughs> the actual Holy Grails, no, I <laughs> can't. I've got this, which is the WRR10. I actually have had the whole set for a few years now. Um, I got them when they weren't impossible to get hold of. So this little thing here is the one that no one can get hold of. This is the WRR10. It's probably worth its weight in gold, although it's not very heavy. Um, so these three bits here that I have in my hand, these are what you need if you want to um, fire your camera remotely. It's a radio trigger. So it has three different channels, as I'll show you on there. Can you see that? So we've got channel 15, 10, and 5, and the same is reflected on the WRR10 so that you don't accidentally fire somebody else's camera. So you put them both on the same channel. The WRR10 goes straight into a Z6 or Z7, and this piece alone is what you need to fire an SB5000 remotely. So if you have an SB5000 and you want to fire it off camera, the easy way, I should, bah, the easy way if you can get hold of these is with one of these. So you get one of these, if you've got a camera which has a 10 pin socket, you um, put these two together carefully and then 
the WRR10 goes into the 10 pin adapter, just like that. And then that will go into your D850, uh, D5, D500, etc. And will also and it will also fire the SB5000 remotely. So this this is the little setup you need if you want to do remote flash specifically with the SB5000. If you want to fire your camera remotely, you also need this bit. Now, as I mentioned before, Nikon have been out of stock of the little bottom bit, the WRR10, for far too long. <laughs> been out of stock for about nine months, and I've had so many people waiting for them. And I would really, really like Nikon to uh, bring them back into stock. So if anyone from Nikon is watching this, uh, sort it out, please. Because, <laughs> because this is a very important little piece of uh, kit here. It's so tiny and yet it works so well and does so much. So you can then, just with this alone, you could fire your SB5000 even if it was up to about 20 feet away from your camera. We've actually done tests back when we had them at the Nikon school and someone was firing it like almost a block away. Um, similarly, if you wanna fire the camera from long distances and not be in direct line of sight, we have tested it out with this plugged into a D850 or a Z and then someone takes the remote out on the street and they're firing through the window, through the walls, they've gone across the road and fired it. So this is a super, super duper effective way to fire your camera remotely. As I say, I have all three parts, lucky me, but, um, but I find it particularly useful. So when you plug it in, you are quite literally, I'm going to just put it into the, uh, the Z here. So there's a little um, socket on the side of your Z where it's got a picture of a remote and it goes in there. And once you pop it in there, make sure I do it the right way around. There we go. And you turn your camera on. You get this little uh, light, which actually it turned. Yeah, it's, it's very hard to see on there because um, it's actually a green light and it's showing up as yellow. When you push the little button, it wants to pair with this thing and then you've got two lights going and then they pair up with one another and then and then you just you can fire the camera which is very very handy i actually need to set it up in the camera to do that but uh, that's all that that is this um this part that's so difficult to get hold of it's a little plug and play gizmo if i had an sb5000 i would show it to you on an sb5000 but i don't here i don't have one here sorry um when i'm next allowed back in the shop maybe i'll extract one and then i can show you how to set that up but I did do a video on it, uh, a YouTube video I did about two months ago, something like that, with that exact setup showing you all the little things that you had to push on the camera and on the SB5000 to set it up. So if that's useful to you, just go and check out our channel um, and it's on there somewhere. Uh, so just so John says, I use a tripod or stand 80% of the time. Uh, just about always manual exposed with back button focus. Yes, I talked about the back button focusing a couple of days ago and how useful uh, that is. Uh, if anyone needs to know more about back button focusing, please, please just tell me and I will I will do a whole stream on the subject of back button focusing. No, I won't, I promise. That would be very boring and dull for you all. Um, now, if you are finding our streams useful and you're uh, interested in donating to our coffee fund please do so using the super chat screen it would be super duper appreciated uh, it just lets us know that we're providing you content of value and of interest and hopefully some form of entertainment as well um, hopefully you're not all going stir crazy due to uh, having to stay indoors so the last thing that I wanted to talk about before I wrap up for today is very quickly just looking at, I want to, so we're going to do this competition, move all the lenses out of the way. Uh, we're going to do this competition and I want to show you how to leave a comment. So I'm going to just switch to my screen display. Here we go. So here is our drive folder. This is the London in Bloom drive folder. And what I want to do is ask anyone everyone, in fact, watching, to go and leave a comment on your favorite image from this stream. So, sorry, from this drive folder. So for example, if you particularly like this one, then you're gonna put a little, uh, you see up here, you've got a little question mark bubble or speech bubble, I should say, with a plus in it, and you can add a comment. And then you can just tap on the thing, let's say there, and you can just say, this is my favorite, smiley face, and then, Basically, the number of comments that we get on each of the pictures is how we'll choose our winner. I want this to be a very diplomatic uh, and, 
and fair competition. So please do upload your pictures. You've got all weekend to do it. I'm going to try and uh, do the announcements early next week. But in the meantime, feel free to keep adding your images. There are some absolutely beautiful images here. You can go through. The link will be below at the end of this video. And you can go and have a browse at them all. If you want to do a first, second and first place, that's also fine. But the, the winner, the first place one, is the one that's going to win a copy of the book. So please go and do that. Just go on to the, um, the link at the bottom of our stream and then you can place your cast your votes, let's say. Uh, so please also keep adding images. So I'm just going to view the comments before we wrap up for today. So Richard says, yes, he uses back button focus. Any tips? Uh, welcome. Yes, you can do. Yeah, so you can post a few pictures. I'm totally fine with that. Sometimes it's quite hard to choose your favorite picture, especially me. I take pictures of flowers all the time. <laughs> so posting just one picture of a flower would be a bit of a challenge for me. Um, and you might be the same. So if you've got let's say two, let's not go crazy. Let's not fill the folder um, with loads and loads of one person's pictures. But if you wanna do a couple, I'm totally happy with that. And then everybody else, please be very kind and go and post your comments on the pictures and whoever gets the most sort of thumbs up likes will uh, win a copy of the book. I realize that you can't vote for yourself. That's kind of the whole point, but hopefully um, that way it keeps it nice and fair. And then, you know, the winner is the is the one that everybody likes the most. I think that's a fair way to do it. Yeah, exactly. Click on each image and then you can expand it so that you can see the whole thing. That's the that's the way to do it. And then you can just click through with that left button. Um, I will do it one more time just to show you how to do that. Let me just switch over to my screen display here. OK, so in Drive, you have to double click it so that you can see the full thing and then you can go through each picture like this or you can use your arrow keys and then just to leave a comment is this little button up here and then you just plop it on the image and leave your comment uh, i really 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 look forward to seeing gosh this, these are so lovely such beautiful pictures so i look forward to seeing what everybody chooses as their favorite um picture also how dare it be so pretty outside and us not allowed to be outside all the time. Am I right? Because <laughs> I find that really unfair. Um, but uh, that's how you do it. And then, so either Monday or Tuesday, I'll try and announce the, the winner. I will keep an eye on the folder and on the comments. So just uh, go ahead, go mad, upload your pictures, come on and comment on everybody's pictures. And I hope to be able to announce a winner, a fair and easy choice winner very, very soon. <gasps> Thank you. Thank you so much. It's Spannyful. I don't know who, who that is, but $10. Thank you very much for the contribution to the coffee fund. That's a coffee and a hot cross bun for everyone in the shop, I think. So thank you so, so much for that. Um, if you're, um, if you're, if you're struggling to find super chat, hopefully my wonderful, uh, colleague will be able to find it for you because she should be able to direct you to it. I can't do it while I'm actually talking to you. Funnily enough, it's quite difficult, but really, really appreciate all your, um, oh, there you go. Dollar sign right underneath the comment section. <laughs> That's really subtle. It's very subtle. Um, okay. So anyone who's stuck inside, who's not allowed out of the house, um, who cannot get a hold of flowers. That's very, very sad. Um, I'm quite lucky in that I have house plants absolutely everywhere, so I always have a subject matter. Um, if you can get a loved one to bring you a bunch of flowers and leave them at a safe distance for you, then all the better. Or if you've got a garden with some flowers and you're allowed to be out there, then that's another way to do it potentially. Or otherwise, dig through the archives. I mean, if you haven't taken a picture recently and you want to upload a picture that you took a year ago but is your your best flower shop that's absolutely no problem i am not going to be looking at the date imprint on the pictures so there will be a way to do it um that is everything from me today i hope that the bracketing um tips have really helped and maybe you want to give hdr a try um i'm uploading pictures into the drive folder the one called becky 
every so often. I posted my pictures that I showed you yesterday from the 500 PF, this monster. There we go. Um, I p uploaded them yesterday so that you can actually see them larger so that you can expand them. Obviously, they're just straight out of the camera. They were transferred from the Z6 straight to my computer with no editing. So I'm sure that if I sat down and tinkered with them a bit longer, they'd look a bit better. Um, but I'm still pretty impressed at how, how it worked. Uh, so please do upload your pictures. I look forward to seeing them. I hope you all have a wonderful weekend, uh, whatever activity in your house you may be doing. Um, I know that I am going to be spending a lot of time in each of the different rooms of my house as I've spent so long in this particular room. Um, but I hope you all stay very safe and well. I'm really, really pleased that you're enjoying the content as well. Um, and it's And it's very encouraging. It means that we'll just keep doing it. And when everything gets back to normal, we will, we will continue to do our streams or um, at least keep uploading our videos and maybe I'll try and do a stream once a week or something like that if you find it useful. And it will give me a bit more time to organize myself so that, um, so that it's not all so off the cuff. Thank you so much, Nick. Thank you. So, um, all right, I'm going to leave you guys now, but it's really, really lovely uh, to, to speak to you all and I will see you next week. Have a wonderful weekend.